Welcome to another Founder Wisdom Pod today with Sylvain Horwood. He is founder at Puru Swiss. This uh, podcast is brought to you by podpar.com. If you want to start scale, be invited to podcasts like this one. Find sponsors. Podcasts are wonderful to meet new people, learn from them, grow your network, and grow your network because you'll get some leads and some clients from these podcast funnels. So go to podpar.com. That's my podcasting agency. If you need some help with that, Sylvain, can you introduce yourself and tell us a bit more about Puru? Yeah, sure. So yeah, I'm Sylvain and uh, I grew up in London on a macrobiotic organic diet back in the 80s. So I was used to natural living um, back then and then moved to Zurich um, around seven and a half years ago and initially found it hard to to find natural products um, back then and started making my own. And that led to the opportunity to found Puru Swiss, which is a 100% natural personal care company based out of Zurich, Switzerland. And our big main focus is our 100% natural sunscreen that contains only seven ingredients and is also, you know, found product market fit more recently because it's mineral based, but also is non-whitening. So it doesn't cause that zip, that white cast that is undesirable with, with, with most uh, natural sunscreens. So how did uh, growing on a macrobiotic diet shaped you and your life and your entrepreneurial career so far? Well, it really was just, um, you know, living living a more natural life. So I was used to using natural or certainly eating natural foods, but also using natural products um, and even prophesizing, you know, back in the 80s and 90s to friends and family uh, members about natural products and, you know, obviously people less willing to listen and, and not really being too open to it, even back then, right? You know, when you tell people that your the products you're using are potentially toxic, you know, it's not something you want to hear. So re- yeah, really I've come come to shape the way I, I produce that message, right? You know, question more softly, you know, do, are you aware of what's in your products, for example? Um, so that's really, really shaped that. And yeah, I had a career in investment banking um, in, in London and also in, in private banking in Switzerland. And yeah, I always had that entrepreneurial mindset. And I think that really shaped, um, you know, it, it really helped me find that what my mission was in life, let's say, right. And it seems to be to educate in an entertaining way, the benefits of using natural products, not only for your personal health, but also for, you know, environment and sustainability as well. Pretty cool. And yeah, your background in banking, why did you start your career there? And how did you bring that to Peru today? Yeah, sure. So I guess really at the outset, you know, living and and growing up around London, you know, it was the sort of highest paid kind of career you could go into. I mean, I did a business degree. Um, So really, you know, the the aim was always to, you know, get get a good high paying job in banking and and use that as a platform to to be an entrepreneur. That whole journey took a bit longer than I initially anticipated, right? I think when you when you get into the banking world, you kind of get sucked into you know, the, the the temptation of an ever bigger bonus and things like that, right? But um, yeah, ev- eventually managed to make the move. Um, yeah, like I said, is that seven and a half years ago, four and a half years ago with the found, founding Puru. And uh, yeah, really, really came from there. And then with Puru, tell us about the business model itself. Uh, there's a bunch of competitors out there. Uh, how do you distinguish yourself and how do you make something that people really want? Yeah, so you're right, right? You know, cosmetics and even natural cosmetics is a highly saturated market. And yeah, I I certainly don't think I could have started this company as easily um, in, in, you know, certainly London or France, which I know better than markets. So I think in Switzerland, you know, there's less, less, slightly less of an entrepreneurial mindset where people are, you know, doing and making their own businesses and products. So that, that was partially the opportunity, obviously used utilizing a swiss based brand as well you know obviously makes it makes it come across as um as quality so yeah really really um c- came from that i think and then where do you actually source the product and who makes the formulas so yeah like i said i initially started making my own right just mixing cacao butter coconut oil with essential oils and even making my own soaps and that kind of thing Obviously now, you know, as we as we try to scale, we're sourcing 
and, and have you know ISO certified production facilities in Europe, where we have you know a um, confidentiality and exclusivity agreement with our main sunscreen formula. So that's uh, you know only produced for us in the European in the European Union, and then then we have you know two two facilities, one in Switzerland that we that we deliver and 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 uh, send to locally, but also in in Germany where we um, can uh, deliver worldwide. These uh, products, I mean, my first company was a nootropic, you know, so a health supplement. Um, we were popping Facebook ads left and right. Some days we were in the green, some days we were in the red. We mm -hmm. had to shut it down after uh, three years, I think. Basically, if I would have to do it again, I'd uh, double down on Amazon and I'd probably deploy massive uh, cold email campaigns to get in stores. What are yeah. your main sales channels and how do you get new customers principally? So, yeah, we have three main markets really at the moment, obviously Switzerland, but also Germany and France. And right now we, uh, you know, I spent a lot of time on, on SEO. So we, we rank organically high on Google, certainly in Switzerland, in all, all four of the main languages on average on page one of Google for natural sunscreen. Um, ours is, you know, our niche is hundred percent natural sunscreen. So it's, very much, um, you know, a, a sort of quality mark that I was looking for, certainly when I was, um, you know, looking for these kind of products. And yeah, um, so a lot of sales come from that. And also with B2B and, and sales in stores, that also comes from, you know, our our brand, which is well known in, in Switzerland, but also, yeah, just mainly from from ranking highly on, uh, on uh, search, really. Okay, and what about uh, remarketing, for example, which is a channel that has my attention nowadays? What about TikTok? Like, where do you deliver your ads precisely? Yeah, so right now we still mainly do Google ads in terms of actual ad spend. So again, it's the main the main um, searches, natural sunscreen, 100% natural sunscreen, pure sunscreen, so a lot of keywords around that, which is our main product. Um, but also, you know, on on TikTok and Instagram, we're still not, you know, spending big on, you know, original content. We do lots of video content, but it's very much more focused on on education, right? So I see that as my mission in life, you know, from my background to try and, like I said before, educate entertainingly as much as I can on on the benefits and really focus on the benefits. You know, we're not looking at what competitors are doing, just just really trying to focus on, on that. So yeah, it's it's um. You know, we have a following on social media, and we and we post on there regularly with with educational content and focus on that. But really, you know, in terms of ad spend, Google Ads is is the main one. Um, but really, the organic reach. But and you know, really, what we're doing right is we're building a brand. You know, and I think from what you said, right, it's obviously that's the that's the really hard part is to build a a recognized, trusted brand. And yeah, I think what we're doing lots of different things around that we sponsored a, a competitive sailing event this year france and spain um which gives us a lot of um interest in those countries but really what what's really taking taking is taking it on right now is the use of a mascot so some some um innovative digital art that we use as a mascot for the for the sailing race and initially it was just to do that for the sailing race but now this cute penguin is and pudgy penguin is becoming part of the brand right and and it's made sense the pudgy, pudgy penguin has a sailing hat um and um obviously that made sense for the race but you know our main customers really are new mothers and new families and, and pregnant women looking looking really questioning what they're putting on their kids skin right and um with our cute ip digital penguin that's um you know that's really appealing to the end customer. I mean, the end customer is actually the kids. It's the it's the mothers or the fathers that are making the buying decisions, obviously. But you know that that the the actual kids are the ones that will point at the cute penguin on the bottle on the shelf. And and this this community, right? We're leveraging a uh, NFT community called the Pudgy Penguins, and they have you know on Instagram over eight hundred thousand followers. They have an absolute. Um, really passionate community that really support us right you know we're just one one part of their massive um project uh, um that, that we're you know community-led right so we we i have my own penguin i'm allowed to use it and that's causing a lot more interest in the us now as well so we're getting more orders from the us um but also you know one example um quickly is that 
we supply uh, our sunscreen as a gift. Well, the, the hotel gives it as a gift in a five-star hotel in San Moritz, which is an exclusive ski resort. They had they ordered five thousand units this year for their for their customers, and we're getting a lot of inquiries just from that. So Americans that come over to San Moritz for the summer, they use our sunscreen as they got it free in the room. And we're getting lots of inquiries, you know, also on B2B side uh, from that. So it's the whole sustainability and, and building the brand and that kind of thing. All right. And for this year, for example, what are your top three goals with the brand? Well, really to get as much engagement and, and reach as possible. Right. So, you know, we're still growing. We've had a lot of uh, high growth this year and, you know, we're looking to get placed in um, larger stores. So, You know, we're a premium product. So, you know, regular supermarkets is not necessarily our target, but pharmacies and um, organic based and focused uh, shops and chains is what really we're focused on now. You know, because it's a very European summer, you know, is, is coming to an end, right? It just started autumn and the, the weather's just got a bit colder here. So now we're building and really focusing on targeting, you know, the pharmacies, both in Switzerland, France, Germany, which are our biggest markets. And the organic stores there and i just started and and hired some some agents to to get the outreach and and start getting them to test in stores um and then hopefully for for looking for you know big orders for the for next summer very exciting on the retail aspect uh what kind of stores are you targeting and is it only in europe or are you thinking uh of an international expansion yeah so right now yeah of course we're focused on europe where our brand has more recognition Um, but yeah, with the uh, whole innovative digital collectible IP, you know, it, it's definitely looking like more the US is is where we could we could really grow, right? Obviously, you know, one of the challenges in Switzerland is there's four oh, uh, four official languages. English is is a kind of well spoken language, but not official. And you know that, that adding extra languages really adds a lot of complexity, right, to the to the business. You not only have to translate all the product information and labels but also there's you know presentations and and uh, communication everything like that and yeah obviously me being english and, and native english speaker then it makes sense to to do the to do the us right and, that, and that's where we're getting a lot of interest we have a, you know four or five smaller stores in the us at the moment um that, that came through various channels and in, including some of our branding efforts and, and through this hotel that has a lot of american customers and Yeah, that, that's really where we're trying to focus on. And, and there's a few sort of uh, regions in, in the US that I see as um, perfect for our premium offering, like which is, you know, Colorado, Miami, which has all year round sun and then Los Angeles as well. What's a myth and the reality when it comes to sun exposure? I try to get my sun dosed every day with vitamin D, yet not mm -hmm. overexpose myself because uh, that could damage my skin. Uh, yeah. cause melo melomena I, i believe it's called damage uh, my cat my granddad died of uh, meloma cancer um mm -hmm. so need to be careful with that but vitamin d is such a great uh regulator uh, altogether it provides testosterone and so forth for men so what is uh the myth vs the reality when it comes to sun and vitamin d and exposure yeah so there is a trend at the moment you know, to wear sunscreen every day, right? And, you know, to really avoid the sun and, and that's people are concerned about aging. We don't recommend that you wear sunscreen every day. Um, if you're going to though, and, that, and that's what you wish to do, then obviously it's much better to use a 100% natural sunscreen with natural ingredients that can cause less um, damage to your skin. Um, and yeah, a lot of our education is around saying some sunshine is good, right? I mean, like you said, right, you can, you know, it makes you feel good, right? I mean, when you're in the sunshine, you it makes you smile, right? You know, you feel happy. So, you know, we, we say some sunshine is good, but, um, you know, try to avoid overexposure. And the more products you use, then the, the more important it is to use a, a natural sunscreen with, with mineral-based products, right? So I'll give you the kind of uh, difference. Right? The, the main difference is chemical sunscreen versus mineral sunscreen. Chemical sunscreens are getting increasingly ban in banned, so in Hawaii and some Caribbean islands. And what they use is chemical sunscreens use nanoparticles that penetrate the skin barrier, and that causes a chemical reaction with the sun. And then that that and some of the other ingredients can then get absorbed into the bloodstream more directly. Whereas a mineral-based sunscreen, which is, comes from a rock, basically, right, you know, a mineral, and that puts a physical barrier on the skin, and that reflects the UV rays. So there's far less of the product gets absorbed into the skin, 
And not only is that better for your own natural personal health, but if you know if you if you're jumping in the uh, the lakes, rivers, or the sea, then it's also less harmful to the aquatic life, penguins, and the coral reef, um, etc. But also, you know, going for one step further, it's um, if you're in a swimming pool, right? Um, you know, everyone else is using chemical sunscreen. You're being more responsible for your own personal health with mineral sunscreen. But then, you know, a lot of swimming pool. Uh, people that run swimming pools they see that film of chemical sunscreen that's that's in the pool right and you know you, you then you're affecting other people that are being more responsible so yeah it's it's better for yourself but also others and and aquatic life and the, and the whole water ecosystem which ultimately feeds into our um you know food system right right well thank you for the information that is well noted where can people find out more about you sylvain so yeah you can you can find me on on linkedin uh sylvain hallward but uh, also on puru.ch. I also have puru.com as well. And there you can see um, I've written a, a children's storybook called Captain Puru, which is also now available on uh, Amazon um, to download on, on Kindle digitally. And that's really, you know, another funnel, right? You know, having having a children's, children's storybook where the, that it's uh, entertaining and uh, appealing to kids, but also you can educate help help me set, spread the message and educate about you know personal natural health and sustainability which are my passions and and using that sort of appealing uh, children's art and, and stories to to further that mission love it and i am charles gormier uh, host at founderwisdompodcast.com that was sylvain from puru